Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to go over the least exciting but possibly a very overlooked Egyptian leader, Ramses. Ramses leads Egypt, a sieve that is in my opinion pretty mediocre and is not super great on their own. Egypt's leaders also do not elevate the sieve very far either. Egypt's sieve ability is probably the better part of the overall kit that Egypt gets. Iteru gives you 15% production towards districts and wonders when adjacent to a river. You have a high river spawn bias, which is pretty good, and you're also immune to flood damage, which is overall pretty useful over the course of mini games. This ability is a consistent ability that's 50% better than the Hungarian ability, which only boosts production on one districts on the other side of the river. It is available all the time as long as you're settling rivers and in most games most of your cities are going to be settled on rivers due to housing. And it really helps out new players to get your econ up early. And it does synergize pretty well with Ramsey's ability later. But it is not like super flashy or something you're going to really change how you play the game to take advantage of. Egypt also gets the Mariano Chariot Archer, which is a pretty sick heavy chariot with a ranged attack similar to a crossbow. However, it is so much more expensive to build than a heavy chariot or an archer. Ranged cavalry is also not a great unit line overall, and this unit is so expensive that you can't reliably mass them early enough to take out a neighbor. Why would you build this when you could build a hero or you could build three archers for half the cost? It's just not super reliable to get enough of them to do what you want to do. It also really doesn't mesh very well with Egypt's overall kit, which is meant more to be used to econ up, and especially with Ramses, you want to be doing that econing. I don't know, I, I used to love the Mariano Chariot Archer, but this has dropped in my opinion a lot over time. And then finally, Egypt gets the Sphinx. A unique improvement that comes very early with craftsmanship, it gives one culture and one faith to a tile while also providing two appeal. You also get extra culture if it's built on floodplains, and you get one more culture with natural history. If it's adjacent to a wonder, you get two faith. And this is okay, but I find that I almost always would rather have food or production on a tile rather than this culture. You get bonuses for building it on rivers, and with Egypt, rivers are super, like, used up already. You're going to be using rivers to build districts, or you need rivers like they're contested for farms or for wonders. If you're going hard for culture, these will help you get a couple of good preserves or national parks, but it, in my opinion, it's not super spammable. You either want to put them on rivers for the culture, but you want farms on rivers to grow your cities, or you want districts on rivers. You want to put them on hills because you were using your river tiles, but you want a lot of production out of Egypt, so it really just doesn't work. Finally, we get to Ramsey's ability himself. Abu Simbel allows you to gain culture equal to 15% of the production cost when you complete a building either through production or purchasing, and the purchasing part there is really important. You get 30% of the production cost of completing wonders, and I'm pretty certain that that also works with great engineers. This ability is pretty solid. I think it's actually not that bad, but I don't think it's fun, and I don't think it's great. You're always going to be using it. It is constantly available to you. It doesn't really need to be activated and only needs you to do things that you're already going to be doing, which is really good for like a baseline introductory sieve. However, I think this is worse than an ability like Rome's because with Rome's ability, you get that plus two culture from your free monuments in every city every single turn all the time however with Ramsey's ability you have to actually be producing buildings and you're not constantly producing buildings and the amount of culture that you get from finishing buildings is not really enough to offset those plus two culture every single turn so like it's not bad and it scales like crazy with your empire size which is very important for Ramsey's if you have six cities building a granary, you're going to get a total of 58 culture. However, if you have 13 cities building granaries, that's going to give you 127 culture, which is a, the 
culture cost of a lot of early civics. 127 culture doesn't seem like much late game when you're making five to 700 culture per turn, but basically you're getting a refund back on the civics that you've, you've already researched and are using that refund to research civics in the future. It does boost you forward early in the game. Each city you build will actually actively work towards your game plan, but only if they're building buildings instead of building an army or building uh, a district or building like settlers or builders. That's the downfall of this ability. You probably need an army to expand as far as you want to expand. And you're probably going to be building settlers or builders unless you can get monumentality to expand as much as you need to expand. So it's pretty conflicting. You want this bonus to come in early and you want to constantly be building buildings. But you won't be building buildings early if you want to expand. And the later you expand, the worse the ability is because you're getting less overall culture from it. So overall, this is not a terrible civic ability or leader ability, but it's just very average. It can be busted if you play into it very heavily if you get super early monumentality which is possible with Egypt because you do get the early unique unit and you do get the early Sphinx so it is possible to get that monumentality uh, you are incentivized to go for some faith because you're going for a culture game most likely you build buildings constantly in your capital and you're using gold and faith to purchase traders and builders and settlers and then you're building uh, using one city to build up on faith or culture and then you're building all those buildings and you will eventually get quite a lot of culture if you can get to like 10 12 13 14 15 cities which most civs want to do anyway you're going to be feeling pretty good but that's the thing you're doing what every civ does anyway and you're not really having fun doing it because you've got no strong like direction towards your gameplay Ramsey's best, pass, best path for victory is going to be culture. You get really good bonuses for a culture game. You get culture boost to get you to conservation early. Sphinx give you culture and faith. You want to be pushing for wonders because you get the big bonus for them. Sphinxes also give you appeal. You're going to get lots of national parks if you're expanding, which you're also incentivized to do. I just feel like Ramsey's culture game is a little boring because nothing is really affecting your game except for you building buildings so eight out of ten diplomacy is next and that's weird for me you get incentivized to build wonders and you get culture to get you to the diplo wonders early you get very good commercial hubs on your rivers you get industrial zones on those rivers and it's really quick for you to get those buildings it's a better victory condition than it is for most leaders for ramses so six out of ten I would say that science comes next. You want to build good industrial zones and factories in a science game. Ramses is not going to fall behind on culture as you do these things. Same for campuses. You're not going to fall behind on them or not fall behind on your culture while you're building them. And culture is actually pretty important for a science game to get you those good cards, especially getting up to the enlightenment. Ramses does this pretty well, so 5 out of 10. Religion and domination both fall the same way. Uh, as the worst type of victory for Ramses. With religion, you don't get a bonus of profits, though you do get fast holy sites. But you usually win religious victories very early compared to other victory conditions, and that means you're not getting the full use out of your ability, so why not just play Ptolemaic Cleo? And for domination, you're not playing with your leader ability either because you're not building buildings, you're building units. So you're really not using that bonus, why not just play the other Cleo? Ramses isn't bad. I think he's better than most give him credit for, but Ramses is also very boring. If you're playing Ramses right, you're not even going to notice anything different about your game. There's no clear thing to track how well you're doing or making you change how you play. Ramses is just the most average leader, so I give him a C. Yeah, I would choose him over baseline Cleo, but I probably would never choose him over Neo Cleo. So let me know what you think of Ramses in the comment down below. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.